In this video, I'm going to talk about scope action within Microsoft Power Automate. Now, the scope action helps you to organize your actions and condition within a Microsoft Power Automate flow. Now, imagine if your flow is very lengthy and say it may uh, have more than like maybe 20 actions or 30 actions. It is very difficult to read once it leaves the context of the screen. You know, so if you have to do multiple scrollings, horizontal and vertical scrolling, then it will be very difficult for someone who is actually troubleshooting or reading your flow. So it's always a best practice to put all the related actions in a scope module. Now, the scope action is a helpful addition for complex and lengthy flows. Scope action can be collapsed or expanded. So this is the one which uh, help you to uh, take control of the real estate of the screen uh, we can nest scope within another scope action so we can have those multiple nesting uh, with a scope action now scope action aids in error handling action within the flows as well so we can simulate something called as a try catch and finally block within microsoft power automate with the help of scope now it consolidates all actions error handling in one eliminates the need to set up error handler for each of the action so uh, in power automate if you want to use an error handling then what you may do is like for every action you may configure run after and then try to catch the error but if you want to catch your error for the entire block then you can take all the actions put it in one scope and then try to use the configure run after which i'm going to demonstrate in my next video with regards to try catch finally block in scope action you cannot initialize a variable so this is an important thing one need to understand that if you want to initialize any variable that should all be initialized outside the scope so basically you should always initialize variable outside the scope uh, of the scope action uh, so that it can be utilized by other controls as well. Now let's go into action uh, and see the Power Automate flow. So now I have a very simple Power Automate flow which has some four compose action. Now if I want to add a scope, what I can do, I can click on add an action, okay? And then I will search for scope to which comes as a part of the control. So if I go to scope, if I click here, so a scope is now added over here. Now, in order to add elements within the scope, I can add, I can just drag and drop, or maybe I can add an element over here, okay? Now let's do one thing. Let's initialize a variable within a scope. So initialize variable for the variable uh, control. I say initialize variable, okay, and say where true, okay, and uh, let me add another control, it's a variable. say set variable and I'll add the set variable as say variable and say false okay. and I'm setting this value within the scope okay now now there are three uh, components within the scope uh, element now I will add another scope control and this is an another scope control then I'll put all these three elements within this scope control. Okay, so now I have two scope controls, so scope one and scope two. Okay, now let me show you in this screen and I can rename the scope action from here and I'll call this as maybe um, say logic for UI. Okay, and this can become uh, say logic for UX, okay, something like this. And I can have multiple scopes, okay. Now I can have scope within a scope. So if I add a scope here, 
I can put this element within the scope. Okay. And I can have one more scope within a scope. And I can put back the scope within the scope as well. And then I can drag this element, initialize variable here and set variable maybe somewhere here. Okay. So that's how I can organize all this element within the uh, canvas. Okay. Now let me do one thing. Let me go into the classic designer. Okay. So it says save and switch. So let me save and switch. Now it is complaining uh, with some uh, items over here. So once I saved it, okay, it is telling me message flow client error written with the status code bad error invalid flow message variable action initialized variable of type cannot be nested in an action of type scope three. Okay, so it says you cannot use this variable. I said okay, if I can't use this variable, then where can I use? Can I use it inside the scope? No, I can't. So if I put it over here initialize variable uh, and maybe set variable here okay and save this then the flow is uh, saved successfully so that means we cannot technically initialize a variable within a scope so that's what i have mentioned to you that you can't use that uh, variable within the scope rest all action you can use within a scope and you can nest scope within a scope and then use it okay now for a scope if this is the scope you can set uh, uh, an action over here which says if you want to run the scope above it if it is successful or if it has timed out or if it has skipped or if it has failed okay you can use all this multiple options so this is basically used for uh, implementing the try catch block also for a scope if this is the scope which I am looking into, logic for UI, uh, I can view the code view. And if you see in the code view, it is all nested. So it has uh, array one, it has scope three, it has scope three, it has run after. So all these things can be viewed. Uh, and in the about, it will give you some basically some description about encapsulates a block of actions and inherit that last terminal status, success failed, cancelled, or actions inside. And that's how you uh, make use of those scope actions. So uh, it's always a uh, good practice to have scope uh, built into your system. Now, if you see this flow has become very big, okay? So if your flow is very big, then with the help of scope, what you can do is you can minimize the scope, okay? Uh, and it is more readable now, and you can put some more description around the logic, okay? So imagine it this, particular scope can hold say maybe 15 controls 20 controls so that means this flow is now completely readable if someone is trying to uh, do a knowledge handover or maybe if someone is troubleshooting this flow so you can take this as module by module and then it's the best practice for your uh, scope to get structured so that's it folks this is all about scope action within microsoft power automate thanks for watching